What up? What up? What up, folks? It's the pastor. I'm going to start this song off right quick. Um, song called Time and Chance, and from back in the day. Y'all give a listen while I get some folks tagged up. There you go. All righty. I pray everybody's had a good day today. Hmm. This song is actually based on scripture. So would y'all please share this out? My conversation tonight is going to be about the North Charleston mayoral election. And um, the fact that it's kind of confusing, really. I ain't the only one. I know I ain't, ain't the only one. I know it's quite a few people wondering about why, what's going on, why all these people. You know? Better still, wh where some of them come from. So a couple of days ago, I talked about, or a few days ago, I talked about some of the candidates. I talked about Stephanie Ganaway Paisley and um, John Singletary. Uh, neither of which there's no way that I could support either one of them. It ain't personal. This is business. We're talking about the business of taking care of people, caring for people. And I've seen enough in the both of them to understand that their agenda is not about the people. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how good you are at regurgitating numbers. If your lifestyle does not indicate that you care about the people that you want to be represented, the people you are asking to vote for you, then that's a moot point. <laughs> your, your lifestyle should show just where you at when it comes to supporting our people out here. And apparently with the two of them, not even apparently, for real, for real, but the two of them, their lifestyle don't indicate that they, they support the people out here. So anybody that wants to know about what the previous um, Facebook Live that I did about them was I'll put the link. I'll put the link in later on. I didn't put it in this one yet. It was in my last live, I think. Um, but, yeah, I, I can't support them. Now, I, I have put my support fully behind Reggie Burgess for mayor. And I'm not trying to cover that up or even to use that as a, an excuse for doing what I'm doing right now as far as sharing insights into these candidates that I've gotten from a, a unique experience that I've had in the political realm, in the community realm, one that many people, a perspective that many people don't have. So I'm just sharing what I know, not what I heard, what I think about, what I thought of, or this is not from an emotional perspective. This is just the real. This is just the real. And again, this uh, song, Time and Chance. Based on scripture, actually. Based on scripture. And I'm going to read the scripture in a minute. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. Time and Chance. Yes. Mm -mm -mm. Time. Chance. Time and chance, that's what it's all about. Is it the correct time for you to do what you're doing? Or are you just taking a chance at something? Sometimes you gotta be calculating. Sometimes you gotta be calculating for sure. Yes, yes. Latoya, how you doing? It's good to, hey, give me a call, okay? Give me an update on what's going on, all righty? Um, I really appreciate you, you know, and uh, definitely, I don't know if there's anything I can still do to help the situation along, but you know, my number's always available to you, 24-7, even if it ain't that issue, if it's something else you need to call about, holler at your boy, that's what I do, and on the real, you know, for anybody out here, my cell phone number's on my Facebook pages, you can go right to my Facebook pages and call me directly, you know, through my cell number, all right? I have a problem with all these politicians out here 
who you got to hunt down a number, go through about 10 or 12 different people just trying to get to them. I got a problem with that. You know, I got a problem with that. If you're going to serve the people, why don't you make yourself available to the people? And those are some of the things that we're going to talk about. But I just said that song, Time and Chance, man. It's from the 70s. It's from the 70s. Jermaine, what's going on, my brother? What's happening, soldier? All right, all right, all right. Lucille, what's going on? Thank you for getting on. Thank you. For, you're always in my heart and in my prayers. Know that. I want you to know that. Yolanda, good evening. Y'all please share this out. But the song, okay, the song is based on scripture from the book of Ecclesiastes. And yes, this Pastor Dixon, but I'm not getting ready to preach or nothing like that. I just want to just talk about this thing, time and chance, right quick, before I actually get into the message that's not going to be a long one tonight about this low-hanging fruit in this election tonight. Man, we got all of these people that's running for office and carrying on. Man, it's, it's, it's insane. You got John Singletary. You got uh, uh, Stephanie Ganaway Paisley, Russ Coletti, Curtis what is Meriwether? <laughs> I don't even know what the dude's name is. Brandon Trollinger, Jesse Williams, Teddy Pryor, uh, um, um, Rhonda Jerome, Todd Oles, Ron Brinson might be getting in. And of course, my candidate that's in there. And actually, I don't care who says what. Based on the historic record, based on the evidence, there's enough evidence to find Reggie Burgess guilty of being the most qualified person to be mayor of North Charleston in this election. I don't care who them other people are because they ain't got no evidence that'll stack up against Burgess. But listen, this thing about time and chance in the book of Ecclesiastes, and I'm going to read it, uh, verses 1 through 8. It reads this way. It says, to everything there's a season and there's a time for every purpose under heaven. There's a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather your stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, and a time of war and a time of peace. And there's a time to run for office and then there's a time when you're just supposed to sit your behind down and, 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 and maybe build until you get to a place where you really have shown those you're asking for a vote from that you really want to represent them because you've done that already. It's just that simple. It's just that simple, folks. Welcome, this is the pastor. I appreciate you all getting on board tonight. That's the last scripture I'm going to read for the night. And it's all about this time and chance. There are people in this race. Again, I covered, uh, I've already spoken about why I support Reggie Burgess. I'm going to post that link again in the status in this status and that was going on good to see you thank you thank you for getting on yes reggie rocks jermaine for real for real um but i've spoken already about why i support reggie and i'm going to post that link to that facebook live that i did maybe three months ago or something like that and i ain't changed because he ain't changed he's still out here grinding can you understand while the rest of these folks just talking that's all. Some of them, some of them ain't just talking, they lying. Okay. I'm going to say it. I don't have anything to lose when it comes to these situations. Okay. That's why I say what I say and I do what I do uh, because I don't have anything to lose from it. You know, Shoot. telling the truth is, well, it got my savior killed, but I'm not getting ready to shy away from telling the truth. If it's the truth, that's all to it. Okay. So I've spoken about why I support Reggie. Uh, and also I've spoken about why I cannot and will not support Neither John Singletary nor Stephanie Ganaway Paisley. Good evening, Councilwoman Jerome. Good to see that you've joined us, okay? Next Wednesday, I will be, you will be part of the subject of my live. Uh, so tonight, I'm going to give a brief recap of my thoughts on John Singletary and Stephanie Ganaway Paisley first, okay? And then I'm going to address the low-hanging fruit in this election. People who are running for mayor of North Charleston, but if you like me, if you in any way like me, 
you're asking yourself this question, why? Why are they running for mayor? There are some people in this race that you have to ask why. And tonight I'm going to address that. The mayoral candidates that I'm going to talk about tonight are going to be Russ Coletti, Dr. Curtis Merriweather Jr., Brandon Trollinger, who I really do think that Brandon Trollinger has decided he was going to drop out of the mayoral race and is thinking about running for a city council position again. And I'm going to mention it again when I get his name. I ain't seen the brother. I ain't seen the brother since George Floyd, you know. <laughs> and what can I say? What can I say? I'm going to speak on my friend, Jesse Williams, okay, and this is my friend, okay, Jesse Williams. And I might even talk about Ron Brinson, Councilman, Councilman Ron Brinson, just in case he's thinking about getting in the race. I'm, I, I, I might. Joseph, what's going on? We out you. Yeah, we out you. I'm right here. <laughs> for real, for real. And, you know, again, there's no malice in anything that I do. It's all about telling the truth. When it comes to Ganaway, Paisley, and Singletary, I shared it already. I shared about how the two of them devised a plan in order to try to subvert my position with the North Area Democratic Club by trying to put a law on the bylaws that discriminated against ex-felons. They literally pushed and tried to pressure and, and it seemed like even intimidate the North Area Democrats into adding a law into the bylaws saying that an ex-felon could not hold a leadership position in the North Area Democratic Club. Now, let me just explain for those who don't understand North Area Democratic Club. You have the Democratic Club at a micro-local level. Then you have the larger club, which is the county club, the county uh, party, the Charleston County Democratic Party. That's the larger party. And they're part of the South Carolina Democratic Party, which is part of the Democratic National Committee. The big thing, national thing, okay? So the littlest one in this area is the North Area Democratic Club. And these two were so dead set on trying to keep me from holding a position, they were willing to write, write into a bylaw that an ex-felon could not hold the position of leadership within the North Area Democratic Club, where an ex-felon is eligible to, not, to, to hold a position in the Charleston County Democrats, in the South Carolina Democrats, and in the Democratic National Co Co Committee. As a matter of fact, as an ex-felon, I ran for the mayor, the office of the mayor of this great city with no problem, and also for the U.S. Senate against Tim Scott. But these two were so dead set on trying to knock me out that they literally discriminated against every ex-felon out here. Now, you do you want, you want somebody in a mayoral position that feels that way? about manipulating laws, discriminating against ex-felons? I don't. I don't need anybody like that sitting in, especially in a city that's nearly 50% black. In a city where in the county jail, we, are, we, are, we occupy probably about 65%. In a state where we, we occupy about 65% of the jail, uh, the, the jailed people. These two black people discriminating against black people. Somebody make it make sense. So no, I cannot and I will not support either one of them. Aside from the fact that with Singletary, you only see him when it's election year. We got people over the last 10 years, there have been 250 homicide, gun-related homicides in the streets, okay, of North Charleston. And never once have I heard him come out to deal with any of them, to address any of them, to stand with any of the, the fallen, the parents or those loved ones as they grieve. Never once seen him at a balloon release or a prayer vigil. Never once, except for when he's running for office. That's tacky. That's tacky. And, and, and anybody that thinks that, that we're stupid enough to fall for that, that, they really have a very low opinion of us as a people. Okay? Yeah, yeah, Lucille, I can't do anything but tell the truth. Y'all done seen me, and I know for real because I've been there. Ain't seen him. Ain't seen Stephanie Ganaway Paisley out here. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. 
running around here false flagging. We ain't got that. We ain't got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. And really, they need to go on and sit it out. I wish they, that they would have saved that thousand dollars. Singletary could have saved his thousand dollars and took maybe took his wife and them out to dinner or something like that with that money, instead of getting in this race when all he does is run for it. Google his name and see what comes up. All he does is run, sue, run, sue, run for North Charleston mayor, lose for North Charleston mayor, sue North Charleston, lose in the lawsuits, run for North Charleston mayor, sue North Charleston, lose in the lawsuits. That's a, it's a pattern. Google it. Google it. I ain't lying. I ain't lying. Google it for yourself. And Stephanie Ganaway Paisley, who likes to talk about mayor, I mean, uh, uh, um, um, judge, the honorable judge Ganaway Paisley. There was a reason why Marlon Kempson did not reappoint her to that position of judge in, I believe it was 2013. I, there's a reason why she wasn't reappointed to that position. And it wasn't because he had another person in mind. Mm -mm, no. And I'm not going to get into what that was about, but it's definitely a reason. It's definitely a reason. You know? So we just got to be careful about these other folks, okay? So those are the reasons why that's a recap of why I cannot and will not support either one of them at all, okay? For mayor, can't do it. Matter of fact, I wish they both would have just sat down instead of even gotten in the race. That would have been too less to worry about. Gareth, what's going on? How's everything? How's everything? How you and Judy doing? Sending much love to you all, okay? By the way, I, I, I'm sorry that I couldn't make it to, for the Morris Ford reenactment uh, this year, but it was definitely in my heart and on my mind as I looked at the pictures from two years ago and uh, just, you know, man, we got we to gotta make it back down. We got to make it back down just for a visit, just for a visit. So now I said what I'm going to be doing tonight, okay, but also this is just the, the this is the first of, of three actual Facebook lives. On Sunday, I'm going to do another live uh, dealing with the South Carolina uh, Senate District 42 race, okay, Sunday, 7 o'clock, Facebook Live with the pastor. And then next Wednesday, I'm going to do another Facebook Live based on the remaining candidates that I haven't discussed, I haven't given my uh, input on uh, in the North Charleston mayoral race. I'm going to talk about Teddy Pryor Jr., uh, Sr., excuse me, Teddy Pryor Sr. I'm going to talk about Rhonda Jerome, who I hope she's still on here. And I'm going to talk about Todd Olds, for, uh, um, former Councilman Todd Olds. Uh, and that, please forgive me, that's Councilwoman Ryan to Jerome. She's currently City Council member. I'm going to talk about the three of them, okay, who I don't support. I just want to make that perfectly clear, who I don't support, all right? But for the nice sake, let's get busy. Let's get, get busy. For tonight's live with the pastor, it's going to be a candid look at four, at least four candidates, maybe five. I'm going to talk about Russ Coletti. Russell Coletti is his first name. Russell, last name Coletti, C-O-L-E-T-T-I. Uh, Dr. Curtis, second Dr. Curtis Merriweather Jr., third Brandon Trollinger, and fourth is going to be my friend Jesse Williams. And I'm making a point to keep saying my friend because Jesse is my friend. And really, if, if, if Reggie wasn't in the race, if, if Burgess wasn't in the race, compared to the rest of those that are running, I probably would have to get behind Jesse because I've seen the work that Jesse has put in. I've seen it. But the problem is, though, I personally, looking at how elections and election cycles go and voters and voter participation, I just don't see Jesse pulling a win out. Okay, and I'll talk a little bit more about it when I get to that. And that's crucial. Time and chance. Okay, There's a time to be silent and there's a time to speak up. There's a time to run for office and then it's a time to sit it out. Period. And for the folks I'm talking about tonight, it, it's a time to sit out. One, this Curtis Mer Merriweather dude, it, it, his time... He, I, yeah, excellent, excellent, Lucille. I, I definitely appreciate that. I, you know, and I'm not pulling anybody's leg. I would. I would. Jesse's shown his faithfulness and his devotion to the people of North Charleston. Irrefutably, solid evidence. Evidence that Singletary, Paisley Ganaway, none of those I others I named tonight, even Teddy Pryor, Ronja DeRome, and Todd Olds. Jesse's been there for the people. Okay? 
And I can't take that from him. So this dude, okay, Russell Coletti, Russ Coletti. Let's begin with him, okay? And remember, the question that must be answered is why? Why, why is he running for mayor, you know? According to media reports, all right, Coletti, he's a North Charleston resident. I think he's lived in North Charleston since 1984, okay? 84, 94, 04, 14. That's almost 40 years living in North Charleston. Yeah, for sure, Jermaine, for sure. That's almost 90 years, I mean, uh, 40 years that uh, Coletti's um, lived in North Charleston. He was a... Um, He's a veteran of the United States Navy and a veteran of the United States Air Force, okay? And he moved to Charleston with the Navy. And then I guess after his leaving the Navy, he worked at FedEx Express as an operations manager for 30 years, okay? That, that's his history in a nutshell. No community engagement. No political engagement. No standing up at school boards trying to make sure that our kids are getting educated. No representing the homeless or trying to get the homeless population taken care of. No advocacy to end this gun violence in the street. There's a laundry list of no's that I can say for this was it 40 years, I believe it is, 40 years that Mr. Coletti has lived here in North Charleston, okay? But look, here's what, here's what the media report said about his platform. It says, he hopes to focus on decreasing the crime rate in North Charleston. Well, about time, isn't it? After almost 40 years, it's about time for him to start trying to focus on decreasing the crime. Because he sure as heck ain't did nothing since, you know, since being here. Nothing whatsoever. But he wants your vote. His focus is decreasing homelessness in North Charleston. It's about time. <laughs> After four, what? Like, this, the, like crime just started in 2023? Like homelessness just started in 2023? And not, but now all of a sudden he wants to. Oh, I need to be mayor so I can address these things that I have never addressed, looked at, talked about, advocated for in my past nearly 40 years living in this city. Get out of here. Get out of here. Why are you even running, man? Go and sit down somewhere. It's all right. You should have saved your thousand dollars again. Took your, took somebody out to dinner or something like that, you know? This makes no sense. Why should people vote for you? Because you say that you are interested in decreasing the crime rate and decreasing homelessness? Oh, and else, also, that's right, that's right, that's right. I forget, because he live out here near me, okay? Out here, uh, somewhere off of Tranto, Green Ridge area, out here, okay? Decreasing the I-26 corridor noise affecting homeowners to make our citizens feel safer in their community. So as mayor, he wants to take care of his community. That, oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> There's a connection there. I heard another name pop up just then. As mayor, this Coletti dude says, I want to take care of my community because my great congress, I mean, my great councilwoman, um, Virginia Jameson, District 3, right? She's been pressing to get the city to erect those noise, those sound barriers on the interstate in order to block the sound from coming into there. And that's a great cause, and I'm definitely, I definitely support it. But this dude put this on his platform. This is part of his platform. <laughs> Let me... I, I, there's a few other things that I'm sure he could have done, like, like making sure people had accessible housing, making sure people were getting paid a decent wage, making sure that, 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 that the people who needed to be empowered to reduce gun violence are being empowered because he sure ain't been doing it. And remember, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. So for 39 years or so, whatever time, amount of time he's been here in North Charleston, he's done absolutely nothing. So not only is he a part of the problem, he and other people like him are the problem. So you ain't just going to pop up here today 
and talk about vote for me and I'll set you free. Uh-uh. No, Mr. Russell Coletti, you should have kept your money. Hmm. Says to reduce crime, Coletti wants to place multiple, I want you to hear this, multiple quick response police departments throughout the city to reach high crime neighborhoods faster. Where are you talking about putting 50 satellite substations at? Out here on Green Reds and on Trano? Or is he talking about on the Whalen? Remember, this city is almost 50% black. And even more than 50% are poor. Where is he talking about putting these police substations at? To reduce crime, Coletti wants to place multiple quick response police departments throughout the city to reach high crime neighborhoods faster. Yep, lock them up. And who are we talking about locking up? He's talking about locking black people up. Just that simple. This clown. People, don't don't be don't be hoodwinked. Don't be bamboozled. Don't don't let their their, their ability to even run for office or get press coverage. Don't even let them them man, don't fall for it. That's all I can say. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Because it's so simple to see through the farce. This dude says we don't want the highest crime rates in the United States in this city. It's a small city, but we rank up there with some of the big cities. We need to get a handle on the crime. That has to be done. After 39 years, this guy says we need to do something about the crime. Last year, he didn't say that because he wasn't running for mayor. But now, since he thinks that's a good talking point, now all of a sudden... Oh, let me say that. If I say that, they'll fall for me. They'll give me a vote. Clown. Clown. Okay. Mm. He says that the current city ordinances to reduce homelessness are currently not, in, not, not being enforced enough. And I quote, he says, everybody pushes the ball down the road to somebody else, and I'm going to take that on, Coletti says. We're going to figure out a way to either help them, speaking of the homeless, or relocate them. Homeless individuals relocate the homeless what is he talking about he wants to get the homeless out of his city is that right i guess that's what he's talking about relocate them get them out what about providing housing for them you know there are women and children that are homeless in our community women and children and he says let's get rid of them by the way he hasn't advocated all these years now Homelessness just did, did, didn't start last month or last week or last year. Uh-uh. Yeah, Jermaine, relocate. Relocate. Mm-mm. But then that, that, that line says, it says, we're going to figure out a way to either help them or relocate them, but the people in the city of North Charleston, they need to feel safe. That's code. That's code for saying that homeless people are a threat to you. Homeless people are disadvantaged people who need a hand up, not a hand out. We need systems in place and people whose minds are broad enough to develop systems in place that will help homeless people to get out of the position of homelessness and into mainstay society. To offer them the programs and the assistance to get where they need to be. And they are not a threat. He feels that the homeless are a threat to him. That's very white of him. I hate to say that. That's very white of him. Mm -hmm. mm, 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 mm. That's crazy. It's crazy. I could read more, but I'm going to stop right there. No, uh, one last thing, okay? In that same interview, he said this. He says, and I quote, I have no ties to the city, meaning I have no ties to the city of North Charleston. I never worked for the city state or county yeah yeah and he was speaking as far as uh political ties or being in somebody else's pocket or something like that but if you just take that on face value i want you to take it on face value i have no ties to the city that's right he has no ties to the city other than the fact that he's lived here for 40 years because he's never done anything to help the city based on his own admissions okay 
And it said, he says, I never worked for the city, state, or county. Again, probably as far as being um, legally an employee or getting favors or something like that. But the reality is he's correct. That's correct. He's never worked in or for the people of the city that he now wants to be the mayor of. Mr. Coletti, I ask you, why are you even running for mayor? You've never done anything before now to show that you deserve to be mayor. Mr. Coletti, why are you wasting our time? And why did you just waste your thousand dollars filing? But that's all right. You ain't need it. You ain't need it. You need to sit down, really. Time and chance. There's a time to run for office, and then there's a time to stand down. Mr. Coletti, now is your time. Just like it's Dr. Curtis A. Merriweather Jr.'s time. Dr. Curtis A. Merriweather Jr. I think he was he's I think he's a North Charleston native. I think he might have been born there. But you know, this dude here is um wow. I don't even know how to describe him. Okay. Let me just read, let me read from his, from his own website, okay, some information about him. His tagline on his welfare, speaking of North Charleston, is a city united, prosperity, safety, and compassionate leadership for all. Man, that sounds good. Man, that sounds good. <laughs> you say disqualified. Yep, disqualified. That's right. He ain't thinking nothing about no jobs because we the ones that's hurting. Not his folk out here. The ones he want the sound barrier put up for. Nah. Mm -mm. That's like building up Park Circle and the heck with the hype. I'm going to drop that right there. <laughs> I'm going to drop that right there. But this dude, Dr. Curtis Mayfield, this is a black dude now. This is a black dude. Okay. On his own website, it says, Dr. Curtis A. Merriweather Jr. is an accomplished advisor, management scholar, senior executive, and thought leader with more than 27 years of progressive experience with the defense and information technology industries. Dr. Curtis has broad expertise in advisory, finance, entrepreneurship, information technology, real estate, estate and strategy. Dr. Curtis's education and experience uniquely qualifies him to bring new ideas and fresh insights to the mayor's office if elected based on industry best practices, experience, lessons learned, research, and scholarship. Let me break that down, okay? Using his own website words, Dr. Curtis's experience that he brings to the table is in industry best practices experience i guess in industry lessons learned i guess in industry research and scholarship because he sure ain't been down with the streets of north charleston for real for real if you go to his website you see that he worked with this ballistics missile organization that technological spot and this or whatever and he he just wants to be the mayor of a city that's 59 excuse me 50 percent african-american and he don't know nothing about no black people according to his own website it's whack it's whack folks on his website, he talks about community engagement, okay? Community engagement. And, 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 and you know, man, this, this dude here, okay, all right, all right. Let me rein my emotions in. This dude here, he's, he, community engagement. When I think about community engagement, I think about what I do, other people like Smurf do, Jermaine, you, Joe, Biaccia, the Rhinos, Stunner. When I think about community, Reggie Burgess, what can I say? I don't think about Teddy Pryor like that. I'm going to be honest with you, you know. But community engagement, listen to what his website says about him and community engagement. It says, Dr. Curtis, under, wait a minute, under, community engagement, it says it right there. Dr. Curtis also serves on the Board of Governors at the College of Charleston. Dr. Curtis frequently also serves as a guest lecturer at colleges and universities due to his passion for entrepreneurship and innovation. Wait a minute, is another part to this or something? 
That's it. His community engagement on, the, on his website. You can go there. You can go there. Curtis Merriweather for mayor or something like that. Community engagement, it says that he serves on the Board of Governors at the College of Charleston, and sometimes he's a guest lecturer at colleges and universities. That's community engagement? What's wrong with him? You, you know, you can be really, you, you, you can be smart, but really be stupid. This don't make no kind of sense to even have this on your community involvement. That ain't involvement at all. And then he has, he has an, another category, entrepreneurship and innovation, okay? And it says there, Dr. Curtis was named an entrepreneurial game changer by the White House Policy Advisor for Entrepreneurship and Innovation in 2020. The White House, I want you to, I want, I want you to get this, okay? The White House Policy Advisor for Entrepreneurship and Innovation in 2020. And he's also certified in tech, technology technology commercialization through Rutgers University. Everything that's on his, his site, none of it says, remember that part about that 2020, I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Nothing on his website says he can connect with anything that goes on in the daily day operation in North Charleston. Nothing about education, nothing about economics, nothing about violence and crime, nothing about anything, jobs, nothing about what goes on every day in the city of North Charleston, but this dude thinks he should be the mayor of the city of North Charleston. Why? Why? I don't get it. On his website, it says, the changes needed in North Charleston must be addressed by a mayor who understands the business cycle, business intelligence, data science, economics, both micro and macroeconomics, Entrepreneurship, including social entrepreneurship, finance, leadership, nonprofit management, project management, public policy, real estate, and much more. They don't say nothing about understanding Ray Ray and Pookie now. In a city that's almost 50% black. In a city that's got nine of the worst, or has had nine of the worst schools, public schools, in the state of South Carolina, a state that is one of the worst in the nation. They don't say nothing about that. Okay? Nothing about that. It says, Dr. Curtis is confident he has what it takes to lead North Charleston toward greater success and transformation. Remember his tagline, a city united. A city, it sounds good. But everything I just read has nothing to do with unity because there are people, real live people, who are left out of his equation. They're not even written into his website. Prosperity, safety, compassionate leadership for all. Where, all of that that I read, and it's some more. You can go back and read for yourself. You show me inside of that, do you find prosperity, safety, and compassionate leadership? All you have is a bunch of word mumbo jumbo and because he also thinks that we might be stupid, okay? And why do I feel that way? There's a specific reason why I feel that way, okay? In my humble opinion, this is my opinion, okay? I think that Dr. Merriweather is really a Republican in disguise trying to masquerade as somebody with liberal concepts, okay? I believe that. That's why I said, remember where it says that he was named an entrepreneurial game changer by the White House Policy Advisor for Entrepreneurship and Innovation in 2020? Guess who was the president when he was named that? DJ T. Roan was the president in 2020. Joe Biden didn't win the election until November 7th of 2020 or and get did not get inaugurated until January of 2021. So who named him this entrepreneurial game changer? What administration? I think it might have been Donald Trump's administration. And I think that there's some other things that let, leads me to believe that this guy might be a little bit more leaning to the red side than he is to the blue side 
where his value system might be a little bit more red than it is blue. Now, not to say that that's neither here nor there. But when you stop and you think about it, because I, I, I looked at him a little bit. I looked at, at his, his uh, he's got a campaign video. You go to his website, first thing you're going to see is a campaign video, right? It's going to show him, I think it's his family, other people. And there's a guy in there, okay, who's actually doing the, the commentary and everything. And he must work for the campaign or something like that. This dude's name is C.J. Westfall. C.J. Westfall is, uh, is, is, for lack of a better word, he's a racist, you know. He's a racist, that's all. This dude, you know, as one time he's, you know, I think he was a Trumper at one time, you know. And now he, he, he actually, he works for Ron DeSantis', uh, DeSantis um, campaign. Here's a picture of him recently, okay? Not the black dude, the white dude. And if you go and you watch that, uh, that video, his campaign video for Dr. Merriweather, the black dude, this dude is all in there, right? On the microphone and everything, talking about vote for Dr. Merriweather. This dude, Mr. Ron DeSantis' guy, supporting what anti-CRT, discrimination against the LGBTQ members of our community, all these other things, anti-black dude. This dude is part of the campaign, okay? Right, right, right. This dude, he says, okay, he's working right. He, he's, he's definitely working with the, with the DeSantis campaign. This is something else from his page, again. C.J. Westfall, that, that ain't my name, that's C.J. Westfall name up there. You know, it says that, hi, friends, the first Republican presidential debate is coming up fast, and we're throwing a watch party at the Somerville County Club, Country Club. Now, the debate is later on this month. So this is recent, okay? You're invited to come watch together and pick up some DeSantis 2024 gear. Share with anyone you think would be interested. Never Back Down presents Ron DeSantis Debate Watch Party. Well, great golly gee wow. And this is the guy who was literally connected to the campaign of the black dude that I asked about. Who this? In that video. I kept saying, who this? And this guy wants 50% of the population to vote for him. And he wants the other 50% to be naive and, and stupid and not realize that this guy is not who he's professed to be, who he thinks is. This is another Herschel Walker situation. Y'all remember Herschel, right? Y'all remember Herschel? Ran against uh, Reverend uh, Raphael Warnock, right? Right. The Republicans have a bad history, okay, of just believing that black people in particular will support candidates just as long as they look like them, regardless of what they stand for and what they mean. Black people will fall for the banana in the tailpipe every time. And Republicans believe that. So here we have this guy getting in this race out of nowhere, never done anything in North Charleston, definitely doesn't know anything about the city of North Charleston, the real city of North Charleston, the real people, because he's never been in the streets or with the people of North Charleston. But he's a black face in the Republican Party. This dude, right? His people. I guarantee you, the Charleston County Republican Party and the state Republican Party, they know exactly who this guy is and who, not him, but the black dude that's running for mayor. They, I, I guarantee you they're helping to fund him. Okay? I might not be able to prove it, but that's my, that's my opinion. And I'm sticking to it. I'm sticking to it. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Dr. Merriweather, why? Why are you even running for mayor? You've never done anything to deserve to be our mayor. Never. Talk a bunch of rhetoric on your, on your, got a bunch, bunch of signs out here. But what have you done, Janet Jackson? What have you done for us lately? Nothing. Zero. And I'm going to do my best to continue putting this message out. Don't vote for a zero, vote for a hero. And I'm standing with Reggie Burgess all the way. Can you understand? You best believe it. <laughs> ah. So that's two. That's those two of the low-hanging fruit. We can, they can get out the way. 
I don't care whether they drop their grand or not. Consider it a contribution to our county or something, county election department. I don't care whether they spent their money or not. Go ahead on and get out of the way. Now, Brandon Trollinger, it's a young black guy who I met right after George Floyd. Prior to that, I don't know what he did or where he was. Might have still been in high school. I don't know uh, or whatever. But he started walking around in the protest after George Floyd. Here he popped up. You know, walking around. And uh, that's great. That's great. I'm happy to see it. But since 2020, after George Floyd, right, and not long after that, he did some things that just did not sit well with the other activists here uh, in the low country. And because of that, you know, he actually kind of distanced himself from the group um, post-George Floyd. And this is 2023, midway. I really haven't seen him involved and engaged in the community in any kind of way since then. He didn't pull a singletary in many ways, you know, although I give Brandon credit for it. I think I will have more respect for Brandon because I have not seen that level of disrespect for the people of North Charleston that I've seen in John Singletary, you know. But Brandon, I mean, running for mayor, I think really that he has decided to step down from that position. But I think he's also considering running somewhere. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. What what makes anybody think that this without, just out of the blue, let me run for office. And as a matter of fact, let me run for the mayor's spot. Let me run for the, I've done nothing. All of these people that I'm talking about, done nothing. And all of a sudden, well, I want to be mayor. You know? And I think he's even talking about possibly running for city council. Now that I think that he might not be running for mayor. Why? And you haven't done anything. You've been missing. Missing in action. What was you waiting on? Another another cop killing or something? I don't know. I don't know. When you had every opportunity to be out here in the streets. We had a 14-year-old killed up on Days Hill and 14 more 14 and 15-year-old shot. You didn't come out and stand with that family, with that group. You wasn't there. Uh-uh. All these other things. When CJ was killed up in Piggly, Piggly Wiggly up on Otranto, you didn't come out there. You wasn't out there. Most of the folks, matter of fact, everybody except for Reggie Burgess is running for mayor. None of them was out there either. Not a one of them. CJ was just at work. And a fool came in a Piggly Wiggly shooting. He didn't even know this guy. This guy killed him. Trying to get to a girl. Listen, Ron, I mean, this was, this, this, in, in this, it, it, no, nobody else from city council came out there. Only person out there would been Reggie Burgess, you know. Little Mike up, little Mike Mike, up on Sumner Avenue. Reggie Burgess. Watching down Rivers Avenue, Reggie Burgess, you know. And you can say that was his job, but... We had other police chiefs before him, and they didn't do that. Not a one of them. Not a one of them. But this isn't about Reggie Burgess, okay? This is about the rest of them. Brandon, Brandon Trollinger, if you have stepped down from the mayor's race, I applaud you. Because there's a time to speak, and there's a time to be silent. There's a time to run for office, and then there's a time to stand down. And if you're thinking about running for council... Why don't you think about running for council four years from now and then do something in between time in order to earn the vote from the people? It's just that simple. Now, finally, I want to talk about my friend Jesse Williams, okay? And um, I might get to Ron Brinson, I don't know. But Ron, he's a current city councilman, so I might lump him in with the others on Sunday, because I mean, uh, next Wednesday. Because next Wednesday, I'm going to talk about Rhonda Jerome, Todd Oles, Councilwoman Rhonda Jerome, Councilwoman Rhonda Jerome, former North Charleston City Councilman Todd Oles, uh, Charleston County Council Member and former Charleston County Council Chairman Teddy Pryor Sr. And I might just add in Councilman Ron Brinson into that because all of those are either elected or former elected officials. Oh, and it's going to be interesting. Tyler, that message is going to be skeletons in your closet. Spe skeletons in your closet. 
but for my friend Jesse, okay? And you know, you don't know how much it pains me to, to have to even, even say this, you know, or whatever. But I just wish that Jesse, that you would stand down in this situation. I know you dropped that G, okay? And I'd be willing to, you know, I know you dropped that G, but man, come on, Jess. The question is, can you win? That's it. And I'm going to put it out. I thought we had conversations about you running for council to make sure that Dorothy Williams didn't get back in, you know, or whomever. And I think that that might have been a great step. You know, I think that you have the heart to serve. I know that I don't think it. I know you have the heart to serve. You're the type of person that we need in a position of leadership in North Charleston. But to jump out here this time and say the mayor, I don't know what's behind that. Is it just because Summy's finally stepping down? The mayor Summy is finally stepping down. Is that it? I don't know. I don't, and I don't get it because you, you, you never called me about it. Never talked to me about it. You know, probably because you knew I probably would have said, "Man, please." There's a time to speak and there's a time to be silent. There's a time to run and there's a time to stand down. It's the time to stand down, Jess. You know, I, I mean you no know, harm. I mean you no know, ill will. But when you add up the numbers, when you add up the numbers, 118,000 approximately living in North Charleston. Number of voters in North Charleston who actually go vote. How many do you expect to bring in as far as real votes? Real votes. It's going to get you elected. And if you can't, if you can't figure that there are enough votes to win, why run? Why run? Instead of putting, putting your support behind somebody that can win. Who has the people's voice, okay? Who has a bigger share of the people's voice than, unfortunately, you've ever had. This is just the truth. That's all. And again, I mean you no offense. I hope that we'll be able to continue as brothers. I just don't get it. I just don't get it, Jess. And I'm going to leave that right there, okay? Because it, it, it really it, it makes no sense to me. And no matter what, I'm always going to wish you well in it. But know that I, I cannot support it because I don't understand it. Okay. If I understood it, maybe I could support it. But I just don't understand it. Okay. So that's that low hanging fruit right there. Okay. Russ Coletti, Dr. Curtis Merriweather Jr., Brandon Trollinger, Jesse Williams. Who again, if this was any other time and Reggie Burgess wasn't in this race, I probably would have to put my support right behind Jesse, okay? But Burgess is the guy. He's the man. He's the person that I know has the heart of the people and is not a politician. And he's got evidence of his community engagement. That community involvement that that Merriweather dude, man, that's a that's a that's a farce. That's a farce, man. Playing with your intelligence and my intelligence, mm -mm. which that's something that Republicans are prone to do. Play with our intelligence. They think we stupid. Okay, man. That dude gets more than one percent of the vote. We in trouble. Seriously, seriously. You know, we got people here, four hundred years after coming over in the boat, still being taken by a white supremacy society hmm. really sad it's really sad so with that being said okay i'm just hoping that the, those that i talked about that they just go ahead on and back down go ahead on you know go ahead on don't forget that dude there that merriweather dude that's not merriweather right there okay but this is the dude that's in his campaign video all over the place and this dude is the desantis guy when I say who this about Meriwether, oh, this is a Republican masquerading as a black man in North Charleston, trying to blend in. Okay, the rest, Ruscaletti. Your qualifications are 
I'm a Navy veteran and an Air Force veteran, and I work for FedEx 33 years. I've lived in North Charleston for almost 40 years, and I've never done any of the things that I say I want to do now as mayor. That's your testimony. That's it. That's it. Brandon Trollinger, stand down, bro. I admire your zeal. I admire your wanting to move up. But, man, you have to do the things that it takes in order to move up. You don't just get on the bus driving. Mm -mm. Especially as a young, inexperienced individual. Uh -uh. And you can sit at home and make up the best platform in the world. But if the platform don't match your lifestyle, it's a lie. Okay? And Jesse, my brother, man, I love you. I love you. And I'm continue to pray for you. Okay? And if you ever need me, you know I'm going to be there for you. All righty? That's what it's all about. Low-hanging fruit right now, though. So, as I said, be advised, though, as I come to a close, be advised that I have two more election lives coming in this next week, okay? So, on Sunday, Sunday, August 13th at 7 o'clock p.m., I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on the South Carolina Senate District 42 special, special election, excuse me, special election. In that live, entitled, Skeletons in Your Closet, that's the title, it's a Stevie Wonder tune, Skeletons in Your Closet, in that live, I'm going to be talking about the three candidates who are running to fill the South Carolina Senate District 42 seat that's been, been vacated by Senator Marlon Kempson, okay? On Sunday, I'm going, this Sunday, okay, this Sunday, the 13th at 7 o'clock p.m., I'm going to be talking about the three candidates who are running for that office, Wendell Gillard, J.A. Moore, and Dion Tedder. And my per personal preference of the three is Dion Tedder. Let there be no doubt in your mind, okay? All three of them are South Carolina House of Representatives, are members of the South Carolina House of Representatives. All three of them are Democrats, and all three of them are black men. But all three of them are not the same, and I'm going to point out the differences. And those differences are what I'm going to talk about on Sunday, based on, and this is key, based on my personal knowledge and experiences after knowing each of them since they've been in office. I can only talk about what I know. I'm not speculating. I'm talking about what I actually know. Sunday, 7 o'clock, uh, Facebook Live with the pastor. Please tune in and share with others. I'll have information coming out about that, okay? And also, the, the third one, today's the first, Sunday's the second, Next Wednesday is the third one. Next Wednesday, August 16th at 7 o'clock, I will once again be sharing my thoughts on the North Charleston 2023 mayoral race. But this time, I'll be talking about those final three candidates who I haven't addressed, or I guess I should say who I haven't undressed as of yet. Councilwoman Rhonda Jerome, former Councilman Todd Oles, and County Council member and former County Council Chair, Teddy Pryor Sr. They're on deck, along with possibly Ron Brinson, next Wednesday for Facebook Live with the pre with the pastor. All right, with, with that being said, I want to wish you all a wonderful evening. Thank you all for spending the time with me. It's 8 o'clock, uh, just about 8 o'clock p.m. I made it in one hour, got this done. Let me just tell everybody, okay, no matter who you are, no matter who you support, no matter... Even what you do, there are people out here who hate on me regular, but I wanted to tell you, I want everybody to know, I, you know, I love you. I love you. You know, I can't stop people from not liking me, and I'm not going to try. But my Bible tells me, in, as much as it's in me, live right with other people. So I choose to love. I choose to love anybody and everybody. When I speak the truth, I speak the truth, as my Bible says, in love hoping that there will be change made as a result of it. We don't need these all these miscellaneous people who haven't done anything in the community. We don't need them in, 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 the, in this mayoral race. We don't need them. On Sunday, there's going to be some things I shared that's going to rub people the wrong way. But if it's rubbing people the wrong way, I would hope that they get rubbed the right way from it. You know? Let's learn. Let's build. Let's grow. Let's gather together. It's a time. It's a time for unity and there's a time for division. Now is the time for unity. 
And the only way we can come to come to come together in unity is if we learn to come together in love. Not agreeing with one another. That's not love. I agree with you because I don't want to offend you or whatever. That ain't love. Love tells people the truth. Love's work is justice. Not in a condescendingly way. Not, not, not signifying or gossiping or something like that. Love tells the truth. That's right, Jermaine. Now's the time. Now's the time. So, there's no time like right now. And in North Charleston, it's Burgess time. Because Burgess time is the people time. And I'm rocking with Reggie Burgess. And the rest of these folks, I wish they'd just go ahead on and step aside. And get with a real winner who's going to look out for the good of all of the people. All of the people. So, Sunday... I'm talking about the South Carolina uh, Senate special election for Senate District 42, Wendell Gilliard, J.A. Moore, and Dion Tedder. And then next Wednesday, 7 o'clock p.m., be back on Facebook Live talking about the rest of the mayoral candidates, uh, Councilwoman Rhonda Jerome, former Councilman Todd Olds, and County Council member and former Chair Teddy Pryor Sr. Listen, y'all take care. Love somebody, hug somebody, call somebody up, tell them you love them, and we go from there. That's right, that's right, Jermaine, with that closing. North Charleston can be the new black Wall Street, but we can't do it if we elect people or let people distract us who do not have the community well-being at heart. If it's about them, it can't be about us. Let's do this. Y'all take care. I love y'all. Peace.